This week, I started building my kitchen from scratch. Before I got started, I was having some anxiety and feeling like I had bit off more than I could chew and that buying and demolishing a house with no real experience was kind of a huge mistake. So I thought, well, let me get a quote from a kitchen contractor and let's just see what a professional kitchen costs these days. He ended up quoting me $40,000, which was fascinating. So I reframed my thoughts and committed to this journey of personal growth and success. In order to be rewarded in life, one must be willing to take risks. It's in these moments of risk taking that we discover how capable we really are. Nothing was more satisfying and made me feel like an adult than buying all new appliances at the hardware store. I was imagining a mid-century rustic desert cabin sort of a vibe, but still modern and profitable. There is really a million ways that you can go about this. So I did a lot of research on YouTube and it only confused me even more. I chose to construct a frame out of two by fours and fabricate the sides with plywood. This is a very simple process that didn't actually take too long. I'd say the hardest part about this was building the drawers. They really do need to be cut and assembled perfectly, otherwise the sliders will be off and your drawers will make you feel like it's 1989. After I built them, they weren't really sliding perfectly, so I just sanded them down in places until everything fit together and slid nicely. They aren't flawless, but they're really not bad for my first time. I found my sink on OfferUp for $100. I did have to drive a few hours to get it, but when I got home and Google lensed it, I found out it's a $600 sink. I was so excited about that. I think underneath it all, I'm just a bargain bin Midwest mom deep down. I was having a hard time deciding on a color palette for these cabinets, but ultimately I decided to leave the raw wood with a medium satin stain. I just love the look of raw wood and the variation in the texture. If I decide to change it one day, it can always be painted.
The side of my refrigerator was killing the vibe in here, so I made a face for that as well. So I cut a piece of ply into the size of the fridge, stained it, and added some trim, and used industrial velcro to attach it. I think it made a huge difference. I took down these old blinds from the window and added some framing. It's crazy how much this changed everything and opened up the space. I saw pictures of this house from 15 years ago and these blinds had been up there this entire time. Some people really choose to enclose their spaces and live like a mole. It makes me feel good to refresh this space and give it new life. Once that was done, I had to figure out what to do for a backsplash. The stain on the cabinets did turn out a few shades deeper than I had anticipated, so I thought putting something lighter up there would help brighten it up and give it a fresh, modern look. So I shopped for porcelain, ceramic, and glass tiles, but I just couldn't decide on anything. I wanted something unique, but everything seemed a bit generic and I was afraid to spend a ton of money and do something bold just to not like it in the end. I don't know how this even came to me, but I decided to make my own tiles out of quarter inch plywood. I did a whitewash on the plywood before cutting the tiles, painting the grain in one direction. That way, when I placed the tiles a certain way, I got this cool effect because of the position of the grain. It's kind of like a chevron pattern or a marble effect. I was going to place them in square position but I laid them down on the ground to get a visual and saw how cool they looked in a diamond position. I thought it was a bit more glamorous and unique this way, so I went with this. Once those were placed, I slapped a few layers of clear gloss on top and caulked the seams. It turned out way better than I expected and I definitely recommend doing this if you're on a budget. The plywood, white wash, clear gloss, and caulk was about $70 altogether. I probably would have paid $500 if I purchased tiles from a store, and I would have had to buy and operate a tile saw. It would have been a whole different situation. I found this sage fabric at the fabric store as well as these matching tassels. Finding a pair like this was so satisfying, and I just knew it was meant to be. You can't ignore these signs y'all. If only I knew how to sew like this when I was on that TV show. I wanted to make some floating shelves so I cut a 2x8 board and added some trim to create an edge so that all my crystal glassware wouldn't slide off the edge and shatter all over the countertop. My electric current locator on my stud finder was going crazy while I was hanging these shelves, so say a prayer that I don't drill into some wires and electrocute myself. I hung a pretty decent sized mirror in this empty space above the backsplash, which I found at a thrift store, and also took down that dated fan and replaced it with 
this rustic light. I'm not crazy about it, so I'll probably swap it out with a white pendant at some point. And that was pretty much the whole first part of the kitchen complete. This is just part one of my kitchen renovation. I'm going to build the kitchen island and pantry in my next video. Remember the guy who quoted me $40,000? Well, Besides the cost of the appliances, I did all of this for probably less than $1,000. So I guess you could say I saved $39,000. <laughs> Crazy. It was such a relief to get this over with. If something went wrong, it would have set off the tone for the rest of the house. I had been doing dishes with the garden hose, so accomplishing this made me feel normal again. At the end of the day, success doesn't define your character. It's the willingness to step into the unknown and embrace the possibility of failure. The world rewards those who are bold enough to believe in their visions and take risks to turn those visions into reality. I think about some of the people that I watched build things on YouTube who are usually like macho hetero dudes. I think some people have a tendency to overcomplicate projects. Overcomplicating projects just leads to confusion, delays, and unnecessary consumption, which can hinder your productivity. I can't tell you how many times I've been persuaded into buying something other than what I originally went into the store to get, only for it to fail and have to return to the store and buy what I had originally intended to buy. I think it's in some people's nature to involve themselves in order to feel needed or intelligent. The true measure of intelligence isn't about complexity, but the ability to navigate challenges with simplicity and effectiveness. Moral of the story, Believe in yourself and only involve people when it's absolutely critical.